This is Brett Contreras, and you are listening to Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. <clears throat> All right, Brett Contreras, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for thanks for coming to my gym and having me on your podcast. I was going to say thanks for being on the show, and, and, and again, yeah, thank you for having us here in this amazing um, establishment that you've built. So the Glute Lab, right? Yep. Okay, in beautiful San Diego. Yep. I. I lived in phoenix most of my life for 40 years and then saved up and moved here to sunny san diego the weather's so much nicer i mean (laughs) phoenix is nice except the summers and they just as the years went on i couldn't hack it like they got more and more brutal some of that because i had a garage gym and i would you know it just got so hard to yeah like the impetus was uh i was at the issn i was a keynote speaker for the issn national conference uh, I guess this was like three, three years ago. 2017, right? You guys were yeah, there. Yeah, we were there. Yeah, we were there. Yeah, remember that weekend? It was like 100. Yeah. It was 120. It was 120, yeah. room. It was 120 yeah. degrees. Yeah, we spoke there too. That was bad. Okay, so, so, were you guys at my talk? It was the last yeah, one. Yeah, the last yeah. one. So, you think I pulled it off well? I remember it was on advanced methods. You can methods. tell you were hot though, right? Yeah. I was sick <laughs> as hell. Yeah. I was so sickly, I couldn't get out of bed. I had heat exhaustion the night before. So remember Brad and Alan and everyone yeah. were there. So mm-hmm. I was driving them around, chauffeuring them because I have a truck and mm-hmm. I'm from Phoenix. And we, I took them to eat and everything, and then I dropped them off. And then it's like, you know, it's like 11 o'clock at night, and I started working out. But when it's 120 degrees at nighttime, it was probably 110. You know, oh, those the low, easily. the low that night never drops below like 105 when it's yeah, that hot. Yeah. So I remember I'm working on, working on, I'm like, all of a sudden I'm like, man. But also, do you remember the the point? It was the Point Hilton and it, it was, the air conditioning wasn't working properly. Yes, yes. So it was terrible. It was like, um, I was sweating all day, you know, and just hot the whole day. So then I'm working out and I'm like, something's wrong. Something's, I don't feel good. And I, I'm like trying to drink fluids and I'm like, ah, oh, something's wrong. So I filled up this kiddie pool for my nephew that I bought. And I just like laid face down. I stripped down naked and just laid face down in it. And for probably an hour and a half, I couldn't move. And all of a sudden I got the energy to uh, climb and crawl to my bed. And I just, I mean, I'm not a good sleeper. You know, I'm lucky to sleep six hours, but I couldn't get up the next morning. And I think my talk was at 3 p.m. And I'm like, it's I woke up at like 10. I'm like, okay, I gotta like, spruce up my my powerpoint go over it i couldn't i couldn't get out of bed i couldn't do it then it's like 10 o'clock 11 12 one o'clock comes around I'm like what am i gonna all i have to do is show up and talk for one hour <laughs> how hard can it be but i couldn't pick myself up and like walk around yeah so finally i just mustered up the energy went and pulled it pulled it off and like people who know me well are like we could tell you're like off but it was convincing enough but after that i called up my twin brother he's a realtor he's a realtor in phoenix but he i knew he could check on places here in san diego and i I go i'm moving as soon as there's a nice place find it i'm (laughs) moving as quickly as i can i need to get out of here yeah this isn't good for my career yeah um but one thing i don't like about phoenix i was always sweating and you're always sweating in your stomach it just looks (laughs) Just not a good look, and here I'm never that bad in San Diego. Yeah, so, yeah. so I got to ask you the same question. I, was that your niece that was here that we met? Yeah, Abby, right. Gabby. Yeah, okay, yeah. so I asked her. I, I was like, now that you've been in San Diego for a couple of years, would you ever move back to Phoenix, Arizona? And she said no. So, what, what about you? Yeah, she hates me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because I mean, I'm, 40 years I lived there. Yeah, it's yeah. my. It's it'll always be my hometown. Oh, absolutely. I just went back for uh, Christmas in December, and I just like driving on all the streets. I'm like, man. Like you, you live somewhere 40 years, you have so many memories Absolutely. and you, you just, I, 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 it's, that'll always be my hometown, but I don't know if I, if I do, if you, one thing that I would like to move back for is like, I miss, you know, it's so open, the streets are mm-hmm. wider, the yeah. property is bigger, like everyone has a pool yep. uh, there and um, here things are more condensed, but also the property tax, or sorry, the <laughs> income taxes oh, here are geez. terrible. It's like. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm spending <clears throat> several hundred thousand a year just on state income taxes. Yeah. And you know, uh, the, the taxes are killing me out here. So I'm like, man, I could move to Phoenix and, and like a property that would be near the beach. Oh, okay, I could I could get a place for like one point, I could build a property for say, my dream property for say 1.5 million. I'm talking like 
like have the, I don't need a huge house, mm -hmm. but I, it would be cool to have it all modern and decked out. You know, all everything's super modern, like the staircases that are like hollowed out, like huff, like floating yeah. Yeah, with like backlit or like, with <laughs> like, like there's lights below them and like l looking all cool and all this state of the art stuff. That, a pool, a jacuzzi, a waterfall, palm trees, and then a giant gym, like this size, like a, size, like a gym. gym like this. Yeah, Cause yeah. I don't like renting either. Like, I don't like, Signing a three year or five year lease. Mm -hmm. It's like you're tied, then you're tied down. Yeah. So if you own the place, how nice would that be? That would, you could do all that for probably 1.5 million yeah. there. And it would take 18 months tops. Yeah. And out here, that would take, yeah. it would take several years. If it was by the beach, you have this coastal commission or something, there's all these hurdles to jump through. And it would be really hard to find a property yeah. that you could do that to. Plus, <clears> things <throat> here, here, here are hilly, it's not flat like Arizona. Yeah. So, I could, you know, but it's like then if I'm gonna move to Arizona or Phoenix, why not move to, if it's gonna be somewhere hot like that, why not move Florida. somewhere in Nevada or Florida? Yeah. Because there they have 0% state income yeah, taxes. Exactly. So I'd go from 13.3% here to 0% in these <laughs> other places. I think about this stuff, but then I'm like, look, you know, the, the best weather is San Diego. The yeah. only where, place I think I could move to is like Hawaii, like Oahu yeah. or something, but yeah. I just hear from so many people that are like, don't move to Hawaii, you'll get island fever. Mm -hmm. And I do think, what if I was like there and I'm like, I want to be back yeah, yeah. for some reason. And yeah. then you're like having to book some flight. Yeah, yeah. I, it might, yeah. I don't know. But it would also be, what if like everyone's telling you you wouldn't like Hawaii and it would be the greatest thing ever. Yeah, so you never know. You know. never know, right? And I always say, if you have an itch, scratch it. So I mean, who knows? But yeah, yeah it's, I, I like asking that question because like we're, we were born and raised in Cali. So I mean, for us, this is home, you know, just like yeah. we, we're so familiar with it, but it's like, I, I, I've gone to Arizona, I've gone to Florida. I love those places, but to actually get up and go move there, I'm like, that's it, tough. Yeah, that's is. very tough. So why'd you click San Diego though? Just because of the weather or? Well, so the weather, you. the weather, but both my grandparents, both sets lived here. Oh, okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. cool. And one lived right down the street from here, uh, like not even three quarters of a mile away. And the others lived in La Mesa, a little, uh, about a 15 minute drive. But uh, my, my, the first grandparents to move here, moved here when I was like two months old. Mm -hmm. So I've been, I'm 43. So I've been coming here for 43 years. Yeah. So it wasn't, I didn't feel like it was a gamble, like a total guess, because I've been coming here a yeah. couple times a year for as long as that's I can true. remember. That's a great point. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's dive into this, man, because I remember you had your gym over there in Arizona, right? It was a badass gym too. I, I never like been there, but I saw it like on Instagram and all that stuff. But to move to San Diego and here in Pacific Beach and open up a badass gym like this, the Glute Lab, <laughs> I mean, I know it wasn't easy. So let's talk about that, man. Like, how, what were some of those hurdles? You know, just to get here and establish this place. So I actually moved here to relax and <laughs> it's just this reoccurring thing that I think I'm going to do and then I never do. Yeah. Um, easier said than done, but I was like, oh, I've, you know, done well for myself. I paid off my house in Phoenix and, and I'm like, okay, I can sell that and then I'll move out here. I have enough saved up for a down payment so I could sell the house and then, you know, I'll just coast out here I can you know go to the beach every day I can relax I can read more I can go on walks mm -hmm. I'll be in such good shape I can ride my bike all over and swim and walk and be in the sun and I moved out here and just you know the first month I had to demolish I had to get my house ready to mm -hmm. demo the I had like a studio downstairs and so the first month was that and then the and then and then I'm like working out at all these gyms around here and like there's this uh what is this what's shock fitness that I used to it used to be like a powerhouse back in the day, but I used to oh, work out there. Yeah. And I go there and it's like I didn't know rust could look like this. There's like rust like growing like like furry balls on everything. It was like I didn't know rust could be that bad. Like why don't they wipe down their equipment? You could pay someone, just wipe it down every night. But I'm like, and then every gym had like this, if you have like an, if you're like OCD a little bit, like with symmetry, like I am, they have like the leg curl, the lying leg curl machine or the leg extension is slanted. So you'll watch yourself doing leg extensions, but one leg's higher than the other. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't they fix this stuff? And it was just 
such a bad, you know, it used to be a nice place and they just let it go to, go to crap. And then I went to like the 24 hour fitness here on Garnett and oh, hated it. And then there was an LA fitness I went to. And then mm-hmm. I went to all these gyms and some of them were decent. I liked cause they were 24 hours, but, and then there was a, uh, the, um, the, there was an EOS that was all right. And then there's a uh, they have world gym too, right? No, the World Gym is now called The Gym. It's oh, down the street. Okay. It's actually yeah, really nice. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's it's still an amazing gym. They have the greatest, like they have like okay, you're like uh, like pec deck. I injured my pec, but I I can't do this pec deck or flies, but I can do this pec deck. Um, How many gyms have this not pec deck? Yeah. Yeah. Not very many anymore. But this is my favorite type of pec deck. Well, they have one of those. There's not even a a name on it. You don't even know what brand name it is. It's like from the 70s and it's well, these these things were well constructed, mm-hmm. but they ha- they'll have like, like, you know, leg curls. They have like five different leg curl machines, you know, lying, seated, kneeling, um, but they'll have like two of something, two of each type, but one's the later, more popular brand. And then one's like an old school brand, like from the 70s mm-hmm. that works even better. They, they, they have everything there. The only thing about that gym that I don't like is that they don't turn on air conditioning. And mm. so in the summers, it gets really, really humid right. in there. Yeah. But that is my favorite out of, and that's where most of the high level people train. But what I realized was uh, it's not good for my brand. Like, you know, I, I was, you know, I have an Instagram and it's, it was pretty popular yeah. then. I'm like, most of my posts back then were, I had a research review with my friend Chris Beardsley. I would repost that at night and then during the day I would like film my workout and post my workout. Like I didn't put much thought into my post back mm-hmm. then. It was like <laughs> I don't think film, you it. film your workouts <laughs> and then and then use like splice to make it into a one minute clip mm-hmm. and then post that. And fast forward all the reps and then post your workout. So I post my workout and then repost my friend's infographic that he did and that's all I pretty much did back then. But my workouts, you know, I went from having my own gym in Phoenix, my garage gym, it was a four car garage gym, mm-hmm. Loot Lab was, Jeez. but I had all my own equipment and my workouts looked motivating to like going to a commercial gym and being like, hey, uh, hey would you mind filming this set of lat pull downs and here, just here, here, just hold the camera just like this. <laughs> and they never do. They're like tilted up and to where you're like cut off and then there's half of the thing is dead air space, like the ceiling. Yeah. You're like, how can they be this bad at filming? Then you look closely in the background and there's the guy like, there's always the guy doing one arm rows that's like round back, like the, with the worst <laughs> form. And I'm like, yeah, cringe, cringing. Like, I don't want that in the background. I want to show, show off good form, not. And then there's the manager coming up like, you know, you're not allowed to have like, like you can film, but you can have people in the background. And I'm like, okay, sorry. I realized real quickly, I need to open up my own gym. I didn't plan on opening up a glute lab here. Wow. I wasn't going to, and then yeah. because I trained at these gyms, I'm like, God, they're, just, they're all so unimpressive to me, then I started my own gym. And here's what's crazy, I wanna make a post on this, like this effect, the Brett Contreras effect. Okay, Crunch, Crunch right down mm-hmm. the street. They have a booty builder. They also have now glute, um, booty, uh, booty programs. They're selling booty programs over here. Really, at a crunch? The gym has a booty builder. They have uh, they have another one too. Oh, they have the gluteator. Like they have, all, uh, and then. But anyway, my point is, there's like two glute studios that have opened in San Diego. <laughs> like glute, like uh, I can't remember their names. Darn it! But there's like two like people who are basically copying Glute Lab. But then every commercial gym has, you know, two Nautilus glute drives, or the new Matrix one, or the Booty Builder, or the glute, the glute Builder, or something. They all have, like I have elevated, because, you know, they, they might have a client that trains at their gym, but also trains with me, mm-hmm. and they watch this, and they're like, God, we gotta be competitive, we gotta, so San Diego has the greatest glute training equipment out of any major city, <laughs> but it's the Brett Contreras effect. If I move anywhere, for two years, I elevate the status yeah. of all the gyms because they got to stay competitive. But well, that means uh, some booty should come to San Diego then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mentioned the gym. Yeah. A lot of my girls who trained here would also train there, gotcha. and they're members there. Gotcha. And so, 
you know, I have my methods here, like uh, the things we do off this equipment, like for example, my pit shark back there, we don't use it for belt squats as much as we do, I call them straddle lifts. You take the cedar row handle and you deadlift it, you know? And Louis Simmons did that long ago, you know? He would do de basically deadlifts mm -hmm. off that plat off the, the belt squat. Yeah, we saw that, we are like, that's but, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we do that mostly, but then I see at, I see at the gym, everyone's using it for that now. <laughs> and I see a lot of my method, when I go there, I'm like, yep, this, and they bought, oh, they have a hip thruster. They also, yeah. the gym has a hip thruster that, get, that gets used all the yeah. time. Yeah. And that's kind of cool. So uh, it's, it's just nice to see that the, uh, the influence spreading like absolutely. crazy out yeah, here, absolutely. but I, I, I hope it does worldwide, yeah, you know, yeah. all around the world. But, but I mean, how did you feel though? Like knowing like you're right there, like, okay, look, I'm gonna open my gym. My mind's kind of set on it, but I am like in the competition. You know that it's expensive to get like a, a facility like this, right? Overhead, all that stuff. So yeah. like, what was just kind of going through your head at that yeah. moment, you know? <clears throat> so it's funny because right when I start building this, crunch wasn't open yet they start they're all of a sudden the crunch is like went from like I didn't even notice I didn't even know what was happening to like it's all, almost the grand opening and, and then there's all these gyms like there's a performance 360 there there's some movement one my dad's driving up and down the street going Brett there's like I counted like eight gyms within yeah. aren't you worried and I'm like no I I don't rely on my gym to make money I make money online mm -hmm. now I did underestimate though because in Arizona, it's very easy. Like you want an LLC, I think it's instant. You like apply for it and you get it. Yeah. Uh, here you've got to wait, uh, but everything here, they have, uh, I don't understand why you wouldn't want business owners to succeed, but it's just something about California where there, it's just not pro business no, owner. No, Everything's like a, against the business owner when we're taking all the risks and yeah. I really wish you know, it, that's why I could move away from California. It's like I have to clean feces out of my pat, my human feces out of my back parking lot. I have four times now. Like, I have to buy, I have to go to 7 Eleven and get gloves and clean up human feces. But, uh, yeah. you know, you'll, you, during this podcast, we might deal with some stuff. Someone walking yeah, by going a lot crazy. Of homeless people out. Like, I don't even mind the homeless. It's the, like when they're like dangerous because they're all whacked out on drugs. Exactly. And, but if and that doesn't even bother me. It's just that there should be a police presence. You should be able to call the cops, and they come. They don't come. They do here in Pacific Beach. They just don't come. So, you know, it's been that that aspect has been challenging. But also, it took way longer, and that was not not my fault. It's like my landlord kept failing inspections, but. To his credit, you'd get an inspector that would come and they'd go, okay, everything's signed off except we need you to fix this, this, and this, these three things. You fix those three things, you call for another inspection, and they come and they go, yeah, now we found these three things. And you're like, okay, you fix those. And then it's this charade. It's like, no, I want the same inspector and I want you to sign off on it. It's like a, a, a racket, you know, here. So, you know, it was probably an extra two months where I had to just twiddle my thumbs yeah. and pay rent when I'm not making money, but I was also paying employees. Mm -hmm. So I ended up spending, and I bought more equipment than I really expected. So I remember getting down to like $6,000 because I hadn't sold my house and I was freaking out. And I was like, I was nervous. There's no kind of stress, like financial oh, stress, yeah. wondering, oh, yeah. especially if you've got employees, like wondering oh, yeah. if you're gonna make it. So. At that point, I just started working, working, more, like doing what I know best, and just work as right. many hours as in the month, as the, in the week as you can, and then things started building up. But that's when I opened up the gym. I think that, along with, I started attracting. Even before I had this gym, I was training people out of my studio at my house, and uh, you know, I just I got this client, Bree, uh, Brianna. She was my first, but she's a bikini competitor. And then I got Massa. Massa was my client. She's a bikini competitor, but you know they both have really big, nice butts. And Massa is well connected. Everyone knew her here, so she's tagging me. Oh. So then all these, you know, I start my glute squad here, and uh, my first glute squad session. I think I had six, six girls, all competitors. Right. And then little by little, you know, now it's up to twenty. And now I'm doing two different glute squads. I probably have 20, 25 people that come for each one. I, I'll, I'll train 40 to 50 people in, 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 in three hours, yeah. you know? And um, 
that I think it's the clients that I was working with and they're tagging me, but also just having the glute lab out here, something happened and I just started getting a thousand followers a day. It just blew up. <clears throat> I mean, I still, that's probably my pace. Yeah. I get around a thousand a day. So I'm at like 950,000 yeah, well, followers. Well, there's obviously, like, like you said, all that influence and there's a huge movement that's spreading, like just like globally, just, I mean, to where people are seeing what you're doing and it's like, it's working, you know, it's uh, obviously. But so, so then, with that, my you know, like my, my booty, my Brett go, goes up with my number of followers, right. and so that started doing really well. And uh, you know, then I started making equipment too, and that happened because I was sick of how expensive everything is. I'm like, why is this thing 25 bucks? Why is this, why is this back extension unit 800 bucks? Why is this, you know, this glute loop 25 bucks? How much, did, how much does this thing cost to make? Well. It's a lot more complicated than people think, but I just, I i mean, my, I have a CEO and then I have a, a few people, like I've only got like five workers, but we, all of us work around the clock. Yeah. And, but I, I'm just, that's my like signature. I'm like, we should sell this for 30 bucks. And I'll go, no, let's sell it for 25. No, let's sell it for 20. Let's sell, you know what, let's do this. and. Just because I know what it's like to, you know, I was a high school math teacher for six years. Yeah, I know what yeah, it's like yeah. to, to where like I wouldn't join Netflix because the twelve dollars just isn't justifiable. <laughs> you wouldn't get better Wi-Fi because, yeah. you know, now I just whatever is going to make my career easier, what my life easier, yeah. I do it. Yeah. But back then, I know, I know, what, I'll never forget what that's like. And so, if you've got something that's, you know, like my T-bell, I'm I spent like 15 grand to get it molded so I could make them out of plastic. Mm -hmm. So I could sell them that, you know, when they were metal, I was selling them for 140. Now I'm selling them for 70. Yeah. So I can sell them for half the price. Absolutely. So that's what I want to do is just basically make good quality products, but that are also more affordable gotcha. for people. So exactly. I started doing that and that took off too. So it's been good business wise. It's been good out here yeah. since that time. But it, well, there was a scary yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah. And I want, I want to just circle back to that t that point where you mentioned that you were kind of a, you had your back against the wall. You only had six thousand dollars. Like things were just taking longer than expected. Most people would freak out. They would even consider throwing in the towel. So what made you just continue just to uh, you know proceed proceed forward and just you know not give up? Like what was that big like just that 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 force to keep you going? I mean, I think when you have people that rely on you, yeah. you know, I had a girlfriend then, she had moved out here. I'm not gonna, <laughs> hey, we, we, we like, I'm not gonna not be able to pay, make the payments on the house. And then I also had hired some people and I'm not gonna I'm go to them. I, Sorry, I got you to quit your job, but now I can't. So it was, wasn't an option. Yeah. So when you have people that rely on you, you can't, as failure is not an option, you yeah. have to deliver, you yeah, know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I pride myself, they never had to worry about, yeah. like, you know, I would starve before I didn't pay them their paycheck. Yeah, you and, know, you, like, and your, your belief was probably so high within just your brand, what you're, what you're creating, to where you knew that it would just take off no matter what. I don't know, I got some good, one thing, I wish I had like a comprehensive list of, list of these things, but thinking back, you know, I was never gonna make a glute, like a hip thrust invention. That was my aunt's idea. She's like, well, you gotta make a make something. You know, I, I put that reverse hyper, I put a glute ham raise right here, and you would do it, you put your back on the glute ham developer and your feet on the reverse hyper and sink down and do the hip thrust. Yeah. I didn't think to do it off. I didn't, you know, I invented the scorcher and then the hip thruster, I never thought, of inventing something I was a teacher yeah. turned trainer like <laughs> I don't invent things it was her idea she's like I'm like I, can, I don't know how to invent anything she's like sure you do how hard can it be you're a good artist draw something up right now the the nickname glue guy that was Martin Rooney I was at a, a perform better seminar and Martin Rooney's like damn you know so much about the glutes you should call yourself the glue guy <laughs> Then Glute Lab, Glute Squad was my Glute Squad in Phoenix. They're like they start calling themselves the Glute Squad. Yeah. Glute Lab were two of my tra my clients, and they're like they made like a Breaking Bad type logo and called it Glute Lab. Yeah. They like made me a logo, yeah. and they start calling it Glute Lab. Um, and I can just go on and on, but with with uh, well, I had Strong by Brett and yeah. one of my friends. Now. I had other people advise me along the way, but one of my friends uh, was like, Brett, um, 
you're the world's glute expert and you don't even have like a flagship glute program. I'm like, I have strong by Brett. She's like, that sounds like a powerlifting program. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you need to have your own signature glute program. I'm like, well, I did trademark booty by Brett um, and I have like a logo. I just never did anything with it. She's like, change it to booty by Brett and then actually promote it. You never promote anything. Actually promote booty by Brett. And because she's like, all the work you do is like, it piles up, it piles up. Mm -hmm. It's not scalable. Booty of red, booty of red, it's the same amount of work every month. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that makes too much sense. <laughs> so I did it, changed it to booty by Brett. I actually like made a couple of posts on it. And you know, that's gone up. I think it was at 800 members and then Jeez. that now, now I'm at 6,500 members. Yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, and you know, who knows what it could get to, but What's nice about that is then that income lets me, you know, oh, my yeah. clients here, my glute squad, I don't, I don't charge them, I don't advertise that because <laughs> I don't want all these people coming in, yeah. but um, I get to train them for free, you know, I get to help people out, my family, I've given them houses and paid off mortgages yeah. and stuff, and, <clears throat> but I like it because uh, if, if you don't, if you aren't accustomed to spending so much, this is what I always tell people, like look, I look at all these influences out, out there and it's like they make more money, they spend more money. Yes, maybe they start making a million a year and now their lifestyle is a million a year. Yeah, of course. They're traveling, they're living in perpetual travel mode, renting these sports cars, and I, I don't judge them for that. I do judge them if they like lean up against their car and act like it's theirs and it's really not. <laughs> that stuff. That's like, the, well, it's okay. like, a, it's this image crafting. It's like you you want people to feel bad about themselves. Right. Like why are they so successful and yeah. you're and I'm not? Like or they're just posting their highlights. But <laughs> uh, I don't like judge if that's what you want. Like if you have the money and you want to travel yeah. the world and mm -hmm. go all over Europe, go all over here. Yeah. That's your prerogative. But I just wish. You know, I always I I always thought I was 25% Mexican, but then my dad did one of those. DNA thing, oh, he's 25%, so I guess I'm 12.5, but I still say I'm 25%. Yeah. I don't know what else I am. I need to go get one of those myself. But anyway, you know, I know Mexicans who come across the border and they just work seven days a week, like 12 hours a day, and they give their whole paycheck to their family. They, they, they live in a little tiny apartment mm -hmm. and they just send it all and they take care of their whole, like, you know, there are big families yeah. in Mexico and they'll take care of everyone. Yeah. And that's how I kind of think, if I can keep my expenses low, I drive a crappy $10,000 truck, I could care less. I get my clothes off of Amazon. I don't need to tr wear fancy clothes. Yeah. I don't need to have fancy things. I don't go out to eat that much. I don't, uh, you know, I pretty much live off of like six foods. I eat you know, protein shake, whey protein shakes, cereal, nuts, seeds, dried fruit, yogurt and eggs, so there's seven things. And I and I don't even, some days I don't even have a hot meal and I'm yeah. okay with it. Like I'll make myself a protein shake and it's not that bad to me. Yeah. So I don't, you know, I could- You're I a minimalist. Could, well, I could, I feel like yeah. I could live in a studio yeah. apartment yeah. and mm -hmm. making 60 grand a year, I could live just fine. Yeah. So that's why that's, what's nice about that is there's not a lot of stress. Okay, if worse came to worse and I just, you know, like say Instagram changed their algorithms because mm -hmm. Facebook did that and I went from that was depressing I think did you guys go through that where it's like we were doing well, well on it's, Facebook a, it's, a, it's a full pay to play <coughs> platform like yeah right yeah. I just quit using Facebook yeah. I quit you I quit Twitter Facebook and YouTube and blogging and just do Instagram I want to get back to blogging though but anyway yeah, yeah. um but if Instagram changes their algorithms if the real estate market crashes if the housing market mm -hmm. crashes if things happen, it's not It's not very stressful knowing I don't need that much to live yeah, off of. Exactly. But when the extra money that I make, let me help my family yeah. first, then let me save up a little money. Then I wanna just like help the, the industry. I would really, you know, I already funded a lot of research, but I would like to just fund a ton of research and help figure out a lot of these questions that we have. There's always so many, one study is published, it just raises questions mm -hmm. and you need more. And I would really like to have scholarships down the road and. You know, just fund good research, yeah. and that would be something cool to yeah. do to be able to give back. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I want to go back to what you're talking about. Just by you're making most of your income online, right? And 
I'm hoping that, that the fitness professionals listening to this, and I don't know if you know, the past two years we've kind of pivoted towards helping fitness professionals grow and scale their online businesses. So that's one thing we always advocate is like you need to build an online component to make more money, two dual incomes, right? So would you say to that fit pro listening, if you're just getting started in this or you've kind of hit that ceiling of just kind of trading time for dollars with just like personal training, do you need some sort of online component? I mean, hell, I look back to when I first started, I was in Phoenix. I opened up a gym in Scottsdale called Lifts and my clients love me. They're like, Brett, you're the best trainer in Arizona and no one knows of you. Why aren't you the, the guy on News Channel 3 like, or News Channel 10 or 12 or whatever? Why aren't you the guy, uh, um, the go-to fitness guy? Like, we know that guy. We trained with him. He's, he puts us on the Stairmaster for the first 20 minutes. <laughs> That's the first 20 minutes of our hour-long session with him. Um, your methods are amazing. I'm like, well, I don't know how to do that. And I'm too tired. Like just going to work, training people for seven straight hours. I was open 12 to seven. So I trained people for seven hours. Then I'd write the workouts. That would take me an hour and a half, the, the workouts for the following day. And then I would lift weights. Now it's been 10 hours and I'm exhausted and I'm wiped out and I have no energy. I can go home, make some food, watch some TV, go to sleep. I didn't have energy to write a blog, post on social media, you know, and that, that's, so I wrote this blog post, uh, probably the first year I started blogging. I, I gotta see if I can find it. <laughs> you got some good ones. Yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> back and like, that was a while ago too. Well, the thing is, it's like, I, I don't, I'm embarrassed of all of them because you learn so much. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them are cringeworthy, but, <laughs> This one was interesting because it was like, look, if you're a personal trainer versus a firefighter, let's say you make 30 grand a year as a personal trainer the rest of your life, or say it was 50 grand, whatever I said it was, for the rest of your life. Well, when you're 60, who wants a six-year-old trainer? Right. Like, and you, you, haven't, you have no pension. Mm -hmm. You have no retirement. So let's say you work 30 years as a personal trainer. Mm -hmm and you made 50 grand a year, okay? So during those 30 grand a year times 50 years comes to what, 1.5 million or something mm -hmm. like that? So you made $1.5 million in your career. But what are you gonna do now that you're 60? You have no savings, not necessarily. You weren't mm -hmm. necessarily saving, you don't have a pension. You know, I don't know, I guess, I don't even know, were you paying into Medicare and Social Security? I don't know how that works, but anyway, do you? are you gonna be you're gonna have to train and figure out ways to make money until you die. Yeah. Now in contrast, if you worked in the fire service, I just gave this example, you start off making 30 grand a year back then, Yeah. <laughs> but now it's probably 50 grand a year or something. But if you work 30 years, well, if you work 20 years in the fire service in Phoenix, you're, uh, you get like, you're the, the average salary of your last three years, uh, you get 50% of that as a pension. But if you work 30 years, you get 80% of that. So your last three years, you're not just gonna be a basic firefighter, you're probably gonna be like a captain or a battalion chief mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. um, say you made it to chief, the head honcho. Maybe they're making, I don't really know, say it's, maybe it's like 200,000. Mm -hmm. Well, you can also work a lot of overtime and things like that. Well, so <clears throat> let's say you made 200 grand in your last three years on average. Well, 80% of that is 160 grand. You make that until you die. So if you start at age 20, work till you're 50, and live till you're 80, you have 30 years yeah. of making 160 grand a year. Yeah. That's 4.8 million, you know? You get none of that as a, as a personal trainer. Right. So you, you, you gotta think about your future. You also gotta think about sustainability. So. In my 20s, I could handle training seven hours straight. Now, I train three hours straight and I'm wiped out. Yeah. I feel like I need a nap. And I think the reason why is because I know I'm only th three hours and I'm like the most like, come on, you can do it, motivating, like <laughs> helping everyone. I do remember back when I worked like a whole day as a trainer, a couple of the people got screwed. I was like tired and like yawning and yeah. trying to like, I'm like, okay, come on. And like, how many reps did you get? Okay, nice job. <laughs> so you know, are you gonna be able to sustain training people all day, all day long? Probably not. And it's just, it's a, 
it's also stressful. It's like, I have 20 clients this month, cool. Oh my God, three of them canceled. I'm down to 17. I gotta get more, but you're, you know, it's just, when you have that online revenue, it helps so much. I remember when I first started, even just having like five online clients mm -hmm. paying you 300 a month, that's an extra 1500 a month. Yeah. And it helps. Cover, that could cover like a rent or your right. mortgage. Like, I mean, and uh, you know, I, you know, it can, it, it can cover a lot of, it can help you buy that piece of equipment that's gonna yeah. take your business to the next level. It can pay for, uh, you know, two vacations per year. It can mm -hmm. help you stay sane. It, yeah. There's a lot of ways it can help. It can help you get better Wi-Fi so you're more productive on the internet. It can <laughs> help you buy that computer you need and things like that. It's, it's just so helpful. So I absolutely think, and I look back to when I was, you know, being 43, when I was like, you know, 16, I think I delivered pizzas. I did all these odd, you know, jobs. But if you net wanted side money, well, what would I have done? Like, try to be a newspaper delivery boy? Would I have yeah. mowed lawns? Would I have like been a pool boy? Like, what would I have done? I would have had to go door to door and knock on people's door. Hey, do you need uh, someone to mow your lawns? Because I mow lawns. Here's my business card. <laughs> and then you do the, you mow their lawn for a month, and then you knock on their door. Hey, hey payment time like here's your invoice like do you have a check can you can you give me a check and i'll go to the store and cash it yeah now you can set up automatic everything's, everything's automatic you can you know you've got a good instagram you've got your link tree mm -hmm. here's all my stuff there has never been a better time to make side money yeah. ever yeah. i mean it was so like true. you know back in the day you had to be like a babysitter a nanny a house sitter a dog sitter or whatever you had to do all these things that but yeah, you had to like get clients through going door to door, word of mouth. And now it's like, you could just be good on Instagram yeah. and make all this extra money. Yeah. You know, like during the time we're recording this podcast, I'll probably sell 10 things through BC Strength. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's so cool, like making money around the clock. Exactly. It's so money nice. Money you yeah. sleep. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. And then would you tell too, like, let's say too, we have a lot of like fitness professionals as well that are doing like, they, they own a gym or they're, they're contemplating on going into owning a gym. And I always tell them, you know, I really don't know too much about that, but I've talked to a lot of gym owners where they say, you know, they kind of regret it that, that you, you know, you probably don't want to, it's so much work you have to literally be married to the place. So what would your advice be to a fitness professional wanting to like build their own gym? It's like a bittersweet, like, <laughs> like I'm mean, gonna look back to lifts. Lifts was cool because it was in Scottsdale, but I trained all my family and friends and mm -hmm. friends of family and fr friends of friends, and it was this coolest network. And that's back when all I did was personal training, and I didn't, even, well, I wasn't even online. So you're like, your attention is all about your clients. You know, you'll be like, hey, I was thinking about your program last night, and I think you might see better results if we do this instead of this. Like, <laughs> you're like the best because you're, you're, you're. You're focused on one thing, and that's being the best trainer to your clients. And uh, and so that, could be, sometimes I look back on what those were the best days of my life, but but I wasn't making as much money. <clears throat> now, here at, here at this gym, there have definitely been some bittersweet things that have happened, but my glute squad, you know, I mentioned moving to Hawaii. I told my client Carly last night, I'm like, I can't move to Hawaii. I, you're the strongest female hip thruster in the world. <laughs> There's Carly, Carly Petritus, that's my client here. And mm -hmm. then there's Katie Sonier in, in Miami. They're both around 700 pound hip thrusters. Holy shit. And like, you that's think insane. like, oh, but they're, they're, no, they're legit lockouts. Yeah. Like, How many boom, I'm saying. one. Oh, okay. But still, <laughs> still, what can you guys do? Like, not that. I no can't, not, not my foot. No way. I'm sorry, not now. <laughs> Maybe when Which, I'm healthy. Yeah, well, so. Maybe 315, a little more. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you think, like, there's some trick to it? No, they are just that freakishly strong. Yeah, hip thrust. And, you know, they're, it's fun working with these women. I've got, uh, you know, this client, Ashley, she weighs 150, pulls 365, but we don't even deadlift that off, and I feel like I could get it at 405. I've got such strong women here, girls doing, you know, 16 chin-ups, and that Ashley that I just mentioned, she got three or four chin-ups with a 45-pound plate. Um, so it's just really cool working with these high-level women, but 
Um, as far as just owning a gym, there are risks with it, yeah. you know? Um, I read this book back in the day called Cash Flow Quadrant. Mm. It's Robert by Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki, yeah. yeah. And it was like, there's a quadrant. Here's how you make money. E is for employee, S is for self-employed, B is for business owner, I is for investor. And those are the four ways to make money. And they all have their pros and cons. What's nice as an employee, remember like being an employee like yeah. back in the day and like, <laughs> You're like, the computers are down for the day. Yes. <laughs> we get to go home. It's almost yeah. five o'clock. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's five o'clock. My work's done for the day. Yeah. I don't have to think about work until eight o'clock the next yeah. morning. Yeah. When you're a business owner, everything's your problem. Mm -hmm. The computers are down. You're like, cool, I have to pay my employee. It's your problem. Yeah. You show up to work, someone threw a rock through your window. It's your problem. There's feces in your parking lot. That's your <laughs> problem. There's a... Um, you know anything it's your mm -hmm. yeah, it's your absolutely. problem and so um so there's more stress but there's more reward yeah. and you know if you can also managing people yeah. especially in this day it's and true. age where the 20 Very year true. old crowd they all they have friends who are killing it on it they feel like there's a lot of entitlement oh. it's like <laughs> more than ever more than ever it's like and they see you're doing well and it's like, why, I, why can I do that? Well, you're not trustworthy. I mean, hell, my own niece today, she's like, when I pass my personal trainer certificate, like, so, like, can I come out with my own program? Like, you can come out with your own program when you've personally trained people for a year, okay? <laughs> you actually have to work with people for a year. <laughs> you can't just like learn from being here with me. Yeah. You've gotta, you think about how much you learn when you actually train people in real life. Yeah, That's exactly. where you learn experience, everything. Yeah. Experience. And you learn so much. And I've been doing it for, <clears throat> you know, I, I say 23 years, but I started personal training when I was 16. I started working with all my friends. Yeah. I remember it was like, when I was like 21, my friend Matt raised his hand and he goes, raise your hand if Contreras taught you how to lift weights in the whole room. You know, I taught all my family. <laughs> yeah. This was before I was a personal trainer. Yeah. A personal yeah. trainer, I was actually, but I've been working with people my whole life and I always will. I always will work with people because you stop and number one, you you don't come up with many ideas for social media, but number two, you get you that's when you stop progressing. Like you might get theories that you develop, but you can't test them out. Yeah. You become more esoteric and th theoretical rather than grounded and practical. Right. You know, I can't tell you how many things I think of and then I try them and they don't pan out the way I thought. Right. So it's very important to actually work with people. Owning a gym, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. If mm -hmm. if your gym crushes it, then you're it's right. Like, yeah. It's like choosing to steal second base or steal home. Yeah. If you if you steal home and you make it, you're a you're a genius. If you if you get <laughs> if you get caught, then no, you're not. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you you made a bonehead move, and so. You know that's why it's being a business owner. I relied on my online popularity. Yeah. Our first month i think we had 50 clients maybe it was the first two weeks we had 50 clients in here and uh quickly had 100 and then we had 170 here Jeez. um at our peak mm -hmm. and uh that's from my online popular if i didn't have that online popularity i don't think i could make it here yeah you would have to hustle your ass off like literally like Gorilla going market. door to door, 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 door yeah networking with some of these putting out flyers yeah, and mail out old school stuff, old school stuff. Yep. pounding the pavement that's making cold calls yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's awesome hi do you need a trainer <laughs> well look no further my name is brett Contreras. <laughs> no i would that would that would that stuff sucks yeah, yeah it does it does but that's something too we do advocate even to like some of our students because you know if you are doing like online and in person and, and you're working for a private gym that you're not getting fun with clients it's like you got to go do some outside of the outside of social media hustling we call it right just go your five mile radius go you know talk to people network cross promote i, I mean, so agree with that five mile to, radius because yeah, that's your that's, that's your because yeah, some of these yeah. pts don't know how to market themselves they don't well, know what the hell to do on Instagram. also i always liken it to like okay when i was a teacher i worked in South Scottsdale, which is poor, and then North Scottsdale, which is rich. Okay. And the North Scottsdale drive, students drive way better cars than the teachers. <laughs> you know, the teachers are driving these $10,000 vehicles and the students are first vehicles, 30, 40, $50,000 BMW or something, or SUV, and mm -hmm. it's like, man, you don't even appreciate that. They'll wreck it, like they don't even care. They're, they're like so, you gotta, you gotta drive that clunker 
where only you can figure it out. You're like, they're like, you're like, I can't roll up your window. You gotta jiggle the handle and <laughs> elbow it, and then you can get it out. You know, like you can't turn the key. And you're like, you gotta, you gotta turn the steering yeah. wheel, and then you can crank it. Um, you know, I drove my first truck was like a 1959 red Ford truck with this bucket seat and like giant wheel with no power steering, no no power brakes, these windows you had to roll yeah. down on an AM only radio. Yeah. I had to learn with an a only an AM <laughs> radio. <laughs> it had two gas tanks. You had to fill up both gas tanks and like switch. When one ran out, you could switch. And uh, I mean, I loved it though. <laughs> That's what taught me how to appreciate when I had a, just like these jobs. Everyone should work a telemarketing job and like, it makes you appreciate when you have made it. When yeah, absolutely. Ha that's what where I am right now. I'm like, man, I am blessed because I love what I do, and so it's not torture. Being on this podcast is kind of fun. Um, being here in this gym is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. When I go home tonight, like I, you know, whatever I do on social media, I've got a lot of raving fans. That's fun interacting yeah. with them. It's fun reading research. I just flew home from Tampa last week visiting my friend Paul Ravella and I had all these studies that were in this folder and I think I read like six of them on the flights home. And I was like, God, I'm so glad I got the time. To, I want more time to like catch up on my on reading research. I don't, how, how, how many people would like enjoy reading three hours of research? Yeah, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. And I, but I love my field. I love my, I love the fact that I'm God, A, to not have a boss breathing down your neck, how much is that worth? It's, to it's me, freedom. that's worth it's several freedom. hundred grand a year. Yeah. And then to be able to schedule, first of all, to not have to wake up to an alarm. Absolutely. How nice is that? And then to be able to schedule things however you want. Yeah, and just knowing you're- You want you a, a Friday purpose. off, and then knowing you have a purpose, and feeling driven by that. Yeah. Being motivated exactly. to that. Being unmotivated is horrible. Exactly. Where you're like, I don't care about this job. I just, all I care about is the weekend or whatever. You exactly. Know? And just to add to that point, the, the person we interviewed um, uh, prior yeah. to this, um, his name's Michael O'Neill. He's a really like legendary podcaster and a uh, very successful guy. And he said that he's at a place right now. So he's like better than me. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying that. He was, like, he, he was, he was really <laughs> emphasizing. He's way out here. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But he was really just emphasizing like finding your sweet spot with your happiness. And his yes. happiness is yes, he, he loves speaking, he loves doing podcasting, mm -hmm. but his real sweet, uh, his real happiness is is uh, being a musician, playing in front of live crowds. That's where he's at his most happiest, and I thought it was spot on. But you know, one pays the bills more than the other. It's yeah. all this. Yeah. It's, the, yeah. Life is just a game of sweet spots. Yeah. I so agree with that. It's like, and I feel like whenever I get mine good, I screw it up. Like right now, there's, uh, you know, like. I really want to update bodyweight strength training anatomy and do a second edition, but I'm so drained yeah. from just finishing my book Glute Lab. <clears throat> I spent two years on that. It's like you, you get your life good and then you take on another project, yeah. and it's it's it. And you think, oh, that's only a couple hours a day. Yeah, I don't have a couple. Like I'm my Instagram keeps. I still reply to people on Instagram. <laughs> you know, it's four hours a night. So I have four hours of Instagram, okay? You need to get Gabby to do that. I won't though, because it's like, how'd you guys like it if like you sent me a DM? And I, like, I mean, I, I do, trust me, yeah. I would want to have an assistant do it, but it's- It's not the same. Well, it's the, uh, what if someone wrote me like something personal or right. like- yeah. And then I have my, like, you're like, hey, so what if you guys were like, hey, you never responded, I told you I got cancer and I'm like, Gabby, why did you not send this to me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I won't do it. Like, I know what you mean, though. Like, yeah. I, it's just, it's, these are personal yes. things. Yeah. And so I handle that. And then I, um, you know, I, so creating content is tough. And I don't have like a schedule. Like every day I wake up and go, what the hell can I put on Instagram today? <laughs> I have no clue. What the hell? And I, I, a lot of times I get here, my niece will be here and I'm looking around and I'm, I'm pacing and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to, uh, trust me, something will come to me. Yeah. I just need to pace back and forth and all of a sudden I'm like, here's an idea. What were you Whose saying? idea was this? That was, was mine. Yeah. That was my idea. It's really yeah. catchy. The, the, uh, the cutout. Yeah. I thought of that and it's funny. So for those who can't, uh, obviously watching this, you, you can't see it, but I have a big cutout. It's a selfie station. Mm -hmm. It's like an Instagram looking selfie station, but I have liked by at Brett Contreras one that obviously that's me and then The Rock. Oh, wow. And so I've gotten people that, that 
when <laughs> people would DM me on Instagram. Like, That's so awesome. The Rock follows you and likes your stuff, and I'm like, no. Why are you saying I don't know The Rock? Like, yeah. Why are you saying that? And they're like. Well, I saw that The Rock liked you, but I'm like, you can't tell that that's fake. Like, what? <laughs> anyway, you get you deal with all that's sorts the, of people. Yeah, on, that's on clever. Here, I clever. saw it, I was like, oh, that's catchy that's as hell. Yeah, I even have the hashtags and everything. But uh, yeah, they they built that for me, and it's funny. I've seen a lot of people copy me since then yeah, on on, cool on social media. But um, and that's another thing. Having a business, you can. Okay, when I was a teacher, I'd come up with these cool ideas, and you present them to the higher ups, and they're like, a lot of times they reject your idea and you're like can't test them here i can do whatever i want so and if you come up with a good idea as a school like i remember in uh scottsdale school district i was like hey we should do like a block oh can you like exercise science kinesiology and then weight training but they're that you, you you know you have the lecture and then you go to the gym you actually go to the gym you know, we do we do the go to the boys and girls club right down the street. I'd walk my kids there. We would lift weights mm -hmm. and go go home. <clears throat> I remember the uh, the um, principal's assistant was like, "Man, this is the only time of that I ever see the kids behaving is for your block class because they wanted to be in it. They, they, it was fun for them. Mm -hmm. But I don't make extra money from that. That's just right. my my creative idea that worked out well." but I don't benefit from it. When you're an entrepreneur, you have, I'm gonna call it booty by bread. I see all these people doing this link tree. I'm gonna make my own link tree instead of linking to my blog. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm gonna start doing this and I'm gonna make my selfie station. I'm gonna, I come up with this idea and then you see real quickly, oh wow, sales are up 10%. Yeah. You know, or like, this is panning out. Yeah. Or, it, <clears throat> And the cool thing about online stuff, it's like, oh, this isn't panning out. Then you just ditch it. Exactly. You didn't waste it. When you, when, you, when you sign an actual gym lease, this isn't working out. Cool. I have to figure out how the hell to make ends meet for three years, or five <laughs> yeah. years, a five-year yeah. lease. That's the worst. Yeah. So that's what's cool about online stuff. Absolutely. But I, I, I definitely agree with what you guys are saying. The online income is so important. But also, if you never pounded the pavement, if you never yeah. had to you know, do things the hard way, you don't appreciate no how easy it is for some of these people who just are genetically gifted uh, yeah. and can and look like Greek yeah. gods and mm -hmm. uh, that, that don't even have to try and they just yeah. look amazing and they can just offer their online stuff and they've never ever trained a single person yeah. Yeah. and they have their online program that they didn't even make. Someone else made it for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard so many horror yeah. stories, but I think there's a double-edged sword of that too, because even like when you're, you get that instant gratification of success through being an influencer or popularity or genetics, like you said, I mean, you're not really mentally and emotionally and spiritually ready for that success. You're not, you don't have the experience. You don't have the business knowledge, the IQ, EQ, you really don't. So it, it's going to backfire on your brand at some point. You're going to mess up. You're not going to have the right, you know, mentors. I could go on for days. You yes. still have to have the other yeah. side, the art of the coaching, which yeah. is a whole different exactly. Life. You know what yeah. I mean? So oh, I so agree with you. And hell, I've made tons of mistakes myself, but I will say that half this stuff no one teaches you. Like, I mean, think about our uh, Robert Kiyosaki would always talk about this. We don't have a good financial literacy in the no, in the U.S. Well, or like, exactly. we don't you, no one teaches you how to be an entrepreneur. And I was guilty of this as a teacher. I remember always saying to kids. You have to pass this class. You can't fail this class. You need it to get your high school diploma. Like, I'm here to help you graduate so you can get a job. And what are you gonna put on your resume that you didn't? I was always thinking of resumes mm -hmm. and employees. Mm -hmm. I wasn't telling them, yeah, I mean, I still wouldn't do this, but you, you drop out, get your, uh, you know, like get, get form an LLC. Yeah. Here's how you form an LLC, patent something, trademark something, get some intellectual property going. Yeah. Figure out how to make a business work. Write a business plan. Like, where do you learn this stuff? And then, yeah, once you get popular, uh, you know, then how do you deal with haters and jealousy? Yeah. And how do you, where do you learn this stuff? Yeah. You know, you have to learn it the hard way. Yeah. So, the more mature you are, the older you are, the better you can handle it. I feel like because, hell, you're seeing a lot of like suicides oh, related to online bullying and all of it uh -huh. yeah it's it's bad really. it's bad it's, yeah really bad yeah. it's really bad yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's why I'm, I'm grateful too we're like you know um we were born in 85 so i feel like we're on that cusp of just like the millennial side but still like we grew up like just really working like not having all this technology mm -hmm. to where we understand both sides and for us like you know it, it would never like get to that point for us to, to break like that 
I mean, uh, so funny just in our lifetime, like, I mean, I'm, I've got nine years on you guys, yeah. but like, I think back to like, remember when you used to call people and it was busy? Like, we didn't have call waiting. <laughs> it wasn't, it was like, eh, eh, yeah. eh, and then, and then like, rotary phones, like, that was in, like, I remember when cell phones came out, first it was beepers and pagers, like, I never had one, but people had pagers, and then cell phones came out, there were just these giant bricks, <laughs> yeah. and then there was no internet. Like, we had to learn about strength and conditioning through reading muscle magazines before the internet came yeah. out. Now there's smartphones, and everyone has a camera. My first camera, for you know, my, my first couple years on YouTube, I had dropped my camera, and it did something to the audio and gave me a lisp. So like oh, the first okay. two years, you know, I'm Brett Contreras. Like it was like, <laughs> and, and people, yeah. people would write in the comments like, no wonder he's obsessed with boots, he's gay. And I'm, like, I'm not gay, I just, I don't really have a list. And they're, they're like, what? What are you talking about? Like, um, I, like I dropped my camera, but why didn't I just buy a new camera? Yeah. You didn't buy a new camera back then, you just used it. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the disposable income. Yeah. Just like when we first started out, it, blogging was a thing, but yeah. you couldn't, like, you didn't spend the money on the brettcontrest.com. First it was brettcontrest.wordpress.org. <laughs> and then once you saved up a couple hundred bucks, you did that. You designed your own banner. Yeah. You had your blog roll. You designed your own banner. You designed your own products. You did everything yourself. Nowadays, people like all have their logos and their graphics designers oh, and their and their photographers that take and they're like, oh, I have never even done a professional shoot. And there's these people who are making barely any money that take that have photographers that shoot them. You know, every other week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like they can't be making much money. Yeah. Like they're they're it's a facade. You yeah. know, a lot of people in this industry. For sure. They don't really make what they say they do, oh. and they don't pro they project yeah. a different. Broke, man. Yeah. Like all it's all it's all vanity stuff. number with uh, just like social media following and stuff. So it's just a huge vanity yeah. number. Yeah. yeah. Well, Brad, man, this has been awesome. Like just you know breaking it down with you. Just I know it's been a long time coming. With this we've known you like for a while now. Like yeah. I'd say like close to a decade, man. So. Yeah. I just want to commend you before I ask you the last question and just say like, you know, thank you truly for number one, letting us come to your gym, your time, and just, you've been a big influence for us yeah. this past 10 years, yeah. man, whether you know it or not, you know? Um, so I just want to thank you for everything you've done yeah. and just keep up. You guys embrace the glute training right away. Oh yeah, Absolutely, man. I tried to spread it as much as we could. So yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. It, I echo the same from him, but uh, yeah, I truly appreciate it. Grateful, man. Uh, I'm happy for all the success and just seeing everything take off. And, I just wish the best going forward. Yeah. Thank you. So what's this last question? <laughs> <laughs> the silence. What does it mean to Brett Contreras to live a dynamic lifestyle? Okay, so when I moved from Phoenix, so when I was in Phoenix, so this is another thing with an entrepreneur, with, a, with an online, mm -hmm. mostly online life, I actually would have day, because I had my garage gym. There were days where I didn't leave the house. Um, my girlfriend at the time was traveling away for school. I was so lonely. It's like people would think, oh, Brett Contreras has all these friends. But as you get older, your friends get married, they get kids, they they stop going out. You know, I stopped going out. I'm not, you know, what am I gonna do? Go out drinking every night and be that old dude in the club? Like, <laughs> so I really got lonely and I isolated myself. Mm -hmm. So when I moved to, when I, when I decided to move to San Diego, I'm like, I'm gonna make a, a difference locally. That's, you, when you study the, the longevity, you know, like the, uh, the blue zones, the people who live the longest, the quality of life, the happiest people, so much of it has to do with your connect, social connectedness Absolutely. and the friendships that you make. <clears throat> so when I moved out here, I said, I'm gonna try to you know, work with people in real life. And then when I opened the, the gym, it was like, I'm gonna get my own glue squad. And I didn't initially, like I, I started out here and I wanted to start training people, but I didn't have my business license here because we couldn't pass the inspection. So I just started saying, hey, you're just my workout partners. Come here and work out. Mm -hmm you're my workout partners for the day. I'm not charging you. This isn't a business situation. We're just having fun lifting weights together. Then once I got my business license, I had accumulated a lot of these clients and I'm like, shoot, what if I start saying it's, hey, it's 20 bucks a session and they can't afford it. A lot of these are, com competing can be expensive. Yeah, they don't yeah, always yeah. have all this money. So I'm like, I'm just gonna do it. 
So now I have all these people I work with and I work with some high level people. I'm giving back. You know, last night a few of them were like, hey, I, my glute loop, I need a new one. And I'm like, just take one. I'm like, go into the closet and take one. They're like, huh, oh, like, no one's looking. And they're like, <laughs> so they, I, give, I give them free stuff. Yeah. And that actually makes you happier. Like that, it's funny because it makes you happier, you know? Um, and so, oh my god, you guys didn't see that home, homeless guy just dumped all this stuff out. Oh, oh Jesus. Dude. He dumped all this stuff out <laughs> up on my, what is it? I don't know. I didn't want to know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, he, he was like shaking it out over my, anyway. Um, so anyway, um, I guess we can edit that out. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So, so anyway, um, without those people, you can, you can have this online persona, you can have, you can fool people, but you see a lot of people, a lot of my glute squad members open up about it. And I will tell you, I train the best looking women in the world and maybe like 25% of them are happy about it and content and feel that they're beautiful. And three fourths of them are insecure and they think they're ugly. And it's sad because, you know, if I were to, when they got into the field, say, here's what you're gonna look like in three years, they'd be like, oh my God, I'd be so happy. Right. But they aren't. So you have to develop other aspects of your life. You gotta be working on self-improvement. Always try and think of like, okay, every day I wanna work on my physique. That's easy, we work out. But, and then I wanna work on my knowledge. That's easy, you read. I also want to work on my business. That's easy. We all work and put in hours. And mm -hmm. I also want to work on myself. And that's the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Meditating is boring. Setting time for self-improvement, like reflecting and journaling. And it's not very manly for what, like when I grew up. I'd be like, oh, hold on, I'm journaling. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm in my gratitude journal. <laughs> um, it's not easy for guys to do. It's yeah, not it's easy necessary. for guys to... Uh, uh, you know, reflect and things like that. Um, at least my age bracket. So I think it's becoming more like it cool is, yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you, you have to figure out ways to like not, because with social media, you can justify working. I could always be working. I mean, I can like answer my DMs. If I don't answer any DMs for the day, I answer all of them and I've already got 30 replies to my responses. Right. I'm already back to 30. Right. So I, then I could reply to those and there'd be, I could just answer DMs the whole day yeah. um, and emails and stuff. So you could always justify working more and you, life is about balance. You have to have this, you have to plan social setting, like social, That's socially true. fun things to do. You have to have some friends, you have to be, feel connected, you have to have like real bonds with people yeah. and it's not easy to do i know i can speak from experience i've sabotaged things i've yeah. screwed up many times before and i <clears throat> and a lot of times it's like with hurt it's like when you before you ever hurt yourself with weightlifting you think you're invincible you're like i can round back to lift mm. <laughs> and then you hurt your back and then you still like i and then you hurt yourself a couple of times you're like okay i need to be more mindful of my deadlift posture right. when i'm maxing out it's the same thing in life, you know, you, you, like for me, once I get my life to where it's good, I then take on a product. And then you, when you're too stressed out, A, you're not going to come out with anything innovative because yeah. you have no downtime. Your innovation, creativity comes from when you're low stress and you're relaxed. Space and yourself. You're yourself. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing is you're not going to be as if maximally effective at anything because um, you're, uh, they're, they're stomping on this stuff. See, she's talking about him sprinkling this stuff. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're not gonna be maximally effective at any anything you're doing. Whether it's responding to DMs, whether it's training people, whether it's lifting weights, because um, you're not in balance. And I that's something I have to really try hard to do yeah. because I, it's it's you know, I don't want to become inaccessible. There's a lot of guys in our field, you yeah. know, that they I think a lot of them are, are kind of like, when we started up, yeah. think of all those egos. Oh, yeah. And I never wanted to be that way. Like, they put themselves on pedestals. I mean, 
Yeah, yeah. It's and it's just, silly. It's like so stupid. That's why I always try to think. Like I'm a, like uh, it's weird now because now that I have this huge, sometimes I'll meet people. They'll see me on the street and they're like. Oh my god, yeah. you're Brooke and Tris. <laughs> yeah. Can I take a picture? Yes, of course. Oh my god, oh my god. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm just a normal dude. Like if they could see me like eating a bowl of cereal in my underwear <laughs> at, at 1 a.m. Like I'm just a normal guy with a boring life. I'll be like, relax, I'm just a normal guy. The, this girl a few weeks ago goes, no, you're not, you're a god. <laughs> like, I'm, 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 then I, that happened. It was right outside of a yard house. Okay. And, and the doorman's like, "What are you, an athlete?" And I'm like, "No, I'm, I'm popular on Instagram." <laughs> and he was dying. He's like, "Man, that was crazy." <laughs> she asked for a picture. My friend took the pic. My friend Paul took the picture. Yeah. And I give her a hug, and she's shaking uncontrollably. Oh, I'm like gosh. holding her. I'm yeah. like, from me, like to them, That's I'm funny. a celebrity. Yeah. I never wanted. To you know who I'm talking about, yeah. some of these guys. No, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I like being accessible, I like yeah. being, responding to people. It's harder and harder the more popular you get. And then, you, you, like I said, you can, if you want, just try to get the most followers you can go, then just, just put stuff out and respond and network. But if you want to make money, you got to be making products. And yeah. create, like I had my book that I made, and I have these other things, th those things take time. Yeah. So then you can't be as active on social media. So any, everything's this juggling act. Right. And it's a constant quest, and like your pod, your podcast expert Mike O'Neill, mm -hmm. he said it came on this game of sweet spots. That's what life's all about, and uh, and I think it's a lifelong quest to like keep because your sweet spot will change, and the things you like to do will change, and yeah. you got to keep trying to stay in that sweet spot and not lose, <laughs> not not find yourself outside of it. Yeah, we'll exactly. We'll just see. really quick to just kind of just add on that note. I mean, I, the fact that you said. He opened up about how lonely entrepreneurism can be. Firsthand, we've experienced that. You know, you could get into your own little isolation, be a hermit, just really get into your own little world and bubble, and it's real. So you have to work oh, on I yourself. I remember in Phoenix yeah. being like, I gotta, like, I need to go. I was like excited to go grocery shop. Now I hate grocery yeah. shop. But when, okay, when I was a teacher, I couldn't wait to get home for the day. I've been around kids and yeah. teachers and stuff. And then, as I remember in Phoenix, as an entrepreneur, I got to a point where I was like, I need to get out of the house. I, yeah. I crave people. Absolutely. And, and yeah. it's nice to be at the point where you're like, you love to go home by yourself and kick your feet up because yeah. you've been so busy and you've been around yeah. so many people. Mm -hmm. That's a good place to be. And if you find yourself, you know, being like feeling lonely and isolated, you got to do something about it because that's, it makes you weird. I remember in New Zealand, especially when I was getting my PhD, I was working 19, 20 hours a day. And, uh, but I would work nights. I, t I asked my professor for a key to the lab and he's like, no students get keys overnight. And I'm like, okay, fine. Then I'll go during the day and you know me, John, all I, all I do is talk. And he's like, I see what you're doing, you know? So he got me, I work nights, yeah, but I'd be completely alone all night and all day. Gotcha. And you start, it just makes you, yeah, you gotta be around people. You gotta Absolutely. be making a real, real life difference. And that's something my supervisor for my PhD, John Cronin, would always tell me, he'd see me on the computer, he goes, Brett, the world's out there, not in here. And I'd be like, you don't know how many people I'm influencing. And he'd be like, I don't care. He's like, the world is out there. And I've always kept that in mind. Like, yeah, all this stuff can come and go, but it's the relationships you make in oh, this yeah. industry. Absolutely. The, that's what's so important to me. Yeah. All the relationships, all the people you influence, all the clients you've trained along the way. Yeah. That's where it's at. Well, well, said, man. well said, man. So, um, where can the listeners find more about what you're doing? And then, is there anything in particular we can support you on? Just, you know, I'm mainly active on Instagram. Okay. I want to start blogging more again, and then, you know, get, I have like 125,000 people on my newsletter, and I barely ever send it out. I think it's like up to like $800 a month for yeah. that, like on Mailchimp. <laughs> right? I need to be active on that, and uh, but also I'm tired of like confined to like how many characters in an Instagram ca like caption, like yeah, a camera yeah. 2300. Yeah. So I'm tired of that and I want to start writing more. So you can just, uh, if you just type in like glute guy, if you forget Brett Contreras, type in glute guy, you'll find my Instagram. If you want to sign up for my newsletter, that's on like a pop-up on my blog and I don't spam people. I don't it's just like once a month I yeah. send something out. Yeah, it's good it's like, hey, get here's what I've been up to lately, or here's a new here's a new product I made or something. So, okay. 
Awesome. We'll have all that plugged up in the show notes. Guys, go follow Brett Contreras. He's a legend. He's doing amazing things. He's building some really, really good booties out there. And he's got a lot of free <laughs> good content that's just really, really game changers. So go follow him. Once again, Brett, so much, thank man. you so much. Thank you very Appreciate much. It, thank you. Great talking to you. Okay, guys, till next time. Ah, all right. That's good, man. Whew, that was good. How was that? Like an hour? A little over an hour. Oh, is it an hour? Yeah. That's good. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. We truly, truly appreciate it. If you guys are a fitness professional, you guys feel like you guys are stuck on an island, you guys feel like you guys have hit your ceiling and you guys wanna get past that ceiling and break through it, make massive shifts in your guys' business, create more impact, influence, income, and independence, then grab a free call with Eric and I. You know, at the very worst, we can talk about some stuff, laugh about some stuff, you know, see where you're from, where we're from, what your hobbies are, but we'd love to hop on a call with you guys and see how we could help you make, you know, some of those massive shifts and breakthroughs and get, get you unstuck and break through some of those plateaus in your business. So make sure to grab your free call. The link's gonna be in the description box. And while you guys are at it, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Talk to you guys soon.